What's up? How are you guys? Today we are talking about why juice can be bad for you. And this applies to any sort of sugary liquid, but uh, people aren't exactly chugging down a Sprite thinking it's good for them. However, they will go to a juice shop and think that destroying their liver with sugar and green juice is good for them. So we'll touch on fruits as well as vegetable juices, but uh, should we talk about hair transplants first for the raw tards? Are those bad for you? And uh, if you guys missed that joke, there's a, another popular dietary influencer on YouTube that recently got a hair transplant that always spouts about how natural things are good for you. So it's a little bit contradictory in my humble opinion. So there's four main points we're touching on here, starting with eliminating the fiber and structure of the fruit, which is crucial for gut motility and liver function because the solid mass of fruit takes up space in the stomach, stimulating that mechanical digestion. When you just drink the juice, it's basically getting absorbed. There's not a lot of solid mass. With the actual fruit, you know, you're putting something in your stomach and it's pushing and it's going down as it would with natural foods. And that fiber that we're removing by juicing the fruit or vegetable is needed to feed certain strains of gut bacteria and soaking the liver toxins. So if you have the juice and the nutrients in that juice stimulate some liver detox, then where is that toxic bile? Where are those toxins going to go? You know, there's no mass, no fiber, nothing, carbohydrate starch for the toxic bile to soak into if you're having juices. It overloads your natural digestive capabilities. You know, I was just watching like a documentary thing on some Inuit people last night and the bulk of their diet, as well as pretty much any diet of our ancestors is meat and grains and fruit and vegetables and certain things are had on occasion as a treat. And when they were consumed, it was in small and pretty infrequent amounts. So it's not something that we would be able to have every single day. Although if you're a very healthy person, yeah, you could probably tolerate drinking liquid sugar for some period of time because it bombs out your stomach. That's the way I like to describe it. You know, drinking a giant glass of sugar water, it's bombing your gut bacteria. That's really what it is when comparing it to regular solid food because your liver, your intestines, your pancreas, the enzymes cannot absorb the sugar and the nutrients fast enough. There's different types of sugar, and this is relative to the amount. You know, if you're just having three or four ounces of juice, it's not that big of a deal, but in the modern context, people are having very large amounts of sugary liquids. Candida and yeast will grow to compensate for temporary influx of sugar. So there's a discrepancy between having a candida infection and just the candida overgrowing. You, know, you could have a iced coffee every morning that has tons of caramel in it and cause a candida overgrowth every morning, but your body can handle it and it dissipates. Eventually, at some point in time, you can get dysbiosis or SIBO if the other modern lifestyle factors are negative enough. Bypasses natural appetite. You know, so not only are you removing all of those things and having these potential issues, you might end up drinking more of it because it does taste better than fruit. You know, I can have one or two apples and feel full, but then when I have a sip of apple juice, I'm like, oh, this is so sweet and good. I want to drink more. It's definitely way past any sort of hunger signaling or, you know, natural palatability. Drastically increases ability of candida to grow. So because you're over consuming, you know, we did a video a few weeks ago, three tips to cure candida. One of the worst things you can do for SIBO or any sort of gut issues, fatty liver is overeat in general. So if the palatability of juice is making you prone to overeating, then it's even worse. You know, we're multiplying all these factors. Concentrates, toxins, and flavonoids. So this depends on the soil contamination or purity. And one of the worst things you can ever put in your body is like someone going to a green juice bar and having a ton of conventional kale because not only does it have the anti-nutrients, the goitrogens, all of those negative things that are contained in the vegetable naturally, whatever was in the soil, the fluoride, the chlorine, the water, the pesticides, that's concentrated in the water of the vegetable and you're basically extracting those toxins, which will be absorbed and concentrated in high amounts. 
because the body absorbs liquids easier. You know, if you were just having the vegetable or the fruit and it wasn't all mashed up and juiced, that structure of the food might actually prevent some of the negative things from being absorbed. So you really have to keep that in mind. There's a lot of uh, negatives from juicing, although it is something you can do every day and be somewhat fine. Uh, I mean, you'll know, you know, if you're having heart palpitations or getting diarrhea or irregular bowel movements and you do have juice in your diet, that could be the culprit. So you definitely want to reduce the amount. And then we have a few things here that are acceptable versus unacceptable. So the best is obviously organic raw juices that you're freshly squeezing yourself. Then we have organic pasteurized juices, which, you know, the purpose is still being achieved, but there is a lack of antiscorbutic value, vitamin C, so uh, you might run into some issues uh, having large amounts of those juices. And then what's unacceptable is juices with added water. So even if it's organic, if it says like filtered water on it, there's probably a lot of chlorine and fluoride and chemicals from the, the water table, aquifer, wherever they're getting the water from. When it goes to the tap, the water filtration plant, it's usually polluted. So you got to be careful because you think you're getting this like super fresh, organic, high quality juice, and then they dump a bunch of tap water in it. So it defeats the purpose. And then we have the regular juices on the supermarket shelf, which are concentrates and just heavily pasteurized and plastic heated, just really, really bad. So, you know, like having a few organic lemons squeezed in your water every morning, having a few ounces here and there of fresh squeezed orange juice might be okay. Uh, I really like apple juice and pineapple juice. To me, those are pretty healthy. Pear juice is also excellent. It's just, you know, are you going to peel that fruit? Are you going to juice it fresh yourself? Uh, you definitely want to have it before you're going to be physically active, possibly in the morning when you're going to go work out. And you, know, you don't want to lay down because you need to use up the sugar. Your body needs to use up the energy. But as with everything, guys, you can include it in your diet, see how you feel. But there's certainly a list of things to keep in mind as well as acceptable versus unacceptable versions of these foods. So hopefully uh, you've learned a little something. And with this information, may you not have to get a hair transplant yourself. So as always, thank you guys for joining me. You can go to frank stefanocom if you'd like to check out and support any of my businesses. But outside of that, guys, drop a like on the video. We'll leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe and check that notification bell. And we'll see you for the next video.